Like this is this is weird. Like <laughs> look at this. Whoa. <laughs> it's like a mutant. I'm turning um, into an old man. That's what happens to old mutants. men. Really? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're good. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey guys, how's it going? Aaron and Benjamin are joining me for this Q and A video today. I convinced Aaron to be in this video because we've been getting lots of questions from you guys about what kind of setup we have in terms of drone, video equipment, um, editing software. Software, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. See, that's why I don't answer these questions. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, and like where we get our music for videos and stuff like that. So uh, he is much better at answering those types of questions. Oh. And uh oh, Benjamin's with us tonight because you know what, we just didn't get a lot done today because it's a lot harder to do videos. Super hard. When you have a baby in the house. I laugh at myself now because I thought before we had him, I'm like, oh, it's not gonna be a big deal. I'm good at multitasking. Like I can I can have a baby and do videos and take care of the garden and the house all by myself. Yeah. It's so no. much more work than we anticipated. <laughs> yeah, we get like nothing done or next to nothing. We're trying to keep up on videos. We're um, not doing as good of a job as we were doing, but I think it'll get easier and easier and I wouldn't have it honestly any other way because being able to spend time with him is the most important and the best thing ever. So I put out a um, thing on Facebook and Twitter today asking you guys to ask us questions about all the things. So what I did is I screen took a bunch of screenshots and we are just going to go through and answer as many questions as we can. Sounds good. Okay, so these first ones are from Twitter. How do you care for air plants? I have three air plants at different times, but just can't seem to keep them alive. So I um, had kind of a hard time with air plants in the beginning. In fact, I think we're gonna dedicate an entire video to air plant care here really soon. So I'm just gonna kind of skip answering that question, but stay tuned for that video. Next one is, do terrariums need air holes? So we just did a video like last week. Mm -hmm. um, we did a terrarium that had some succulents in it and it was kind of misleading because in the fast version of that project, you could not see that there were air holes in that in the terrarium. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary for all plants. Like if you do moss and ferns and those kind of humid, humidity loving plants, they can take a fully enclosed um, terrarium. But if you're doing things that don't like it humid, you know, like more of a dry climate, like cactus and succulents, you do want to make sure there's air holes. And there are two air holes in that terrarium. Did not show up in the fast version. I explained it in the long version. Probably more of an editing mistake on my part. Ah, I mean, it's just always a good idea to watch the long version if we include it because I do explain a lot of things way more in depth like care and those types of things so um, that terrarium did have air holes so those plants will be just fine so I did screenshot a bunch of personal questions too because you guys asked a bunch of good ones I think so the first one is how did the two of you meet it was at church my dad's a pastor yeah. and uh, we met at church yeah like when I was a teenager yeah we started going to your church when I was like 17 mm -hmm. I think so anyway, we didn't really start hanging out though until early 20s mm -hmm. ish. So anyway, Elaine asked, could you talk a bit more about starting plants from seeds and greenhouses and does it matter what type of seed you purchase? I see seed packets from 10 cents a piece to $5 a piece. Does it make a difference? Um, honestly, I would just check the packaging. I think for most credible seed sources, there needs to be a purity and germination um, rate included on the seed package somewhere. There's usually like a stamp or a sticker. Oh, hey buddy. You okay? So yeah, I would just check the back of the seed packet, look for that information, and I honestly don't think it matters what the cost of the seed is as long as the germination rate is high. Um, and the purity, of course, you don't want weed seeds included in there. Um, because I see seeds like, I mean, we sell seeds, bulk seeds at a minimum of a $2 packet, which you get a ton in the bulk area for $2, all the way up to like $6.99, $7.99, $8.99 for some of the prepackaged ones. Um, <laughs> And there's really no difference in like the quality of doing? seed. It's just usually a um, difference of uh, variety. Like if something is harder to grow, so there's not as much seed out there, etc. Okay, so this was an excellent question by Mrs. A on Twitter. What's a project you've always wanted to do but haven't had the chance to tackle yet? Do you have one? You thought about that? Well, okay, so my realm is very different. I want like $30,000 cameras. Well, that's a good question for you then. So yeah. that's what, that's the project you that's want to tackle. That's the project I want to tackle. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's kind of, well, okay, so I'll give you my, my fantasy project and then my reality project. So my fantasy project is to be able to tackle like without a budget, to be able to go through all of our gardens and almost to start with a blank, a blank slate, like tear all of the stuff out that is misshapen or diseased or like it's starting, it's old, cause you know plants have a life cycle too and start completely over and do it all like English estate style with 
hardscape and statuary and beautiful mature plants and you can buy hedging that's almost like a hedge already I would do that if I could afford it um, so that's my fantasy project that I would love to tackle as far as a reality project I would love to dedicate a huge space like a vegetable garden size space uh, for cut flowers I would like to just do row crops just row crops of flowers so that I could cut them and not feel bad about bringing them into the house because as it is now I love to do cut flowers for the house but I feel like I plant the flowers in my garden like in my flower beds to look pretty in my flower beds like I plant things in layers so that you can see all those colors together so if you're cutting them to bring them inside you're kind of taking them like out of that garden element and kind of taking away from what your plans were for your, if that makes sense for your flower yeah, bed. Sure. So anyway, I would love to do a big, big cut garden, but in row style, so I don't feel bad about cutting them. That's that. Okay, so next one is, my question is when shopping at the nursery, do you pay for the plants and trees? Get a discount or are they given to you? You're very lucky to have the choices that you do have. I know when I worked for some companies, it was gratis at times, is that gratis? Gratis? Gratis. Gratis? I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. So that you could um, talk about it. Thanks. Um, so various different things. Um, many of you know that my parents own a garden center and I have worked there for many, many years. So um, I do get a discount. I cover definitely cover cost and shipping and all that stuff, but I do get a discounted price on plants. I hardly ever get any free plants unless I'm taking stuff like that was samples that were given to us by a grower or something. They sometimes drop off like loads of sample plants, not very often. Or my parents, they um, will occasionally, like I'll go into my office and there'll be a plant that I've been eyeballing and my mom knows I really want it and she'll put it in my office with a note or something in there. It's really sweet. Um, but I usually do pay, I pay something for the plants. However, we do work with quite a few companies. Um, like you guys know we work with Proven Winners, so oftentimes we will get a shipment in of plants um, specifically for projects for them that we're working on and those we don't have to pay for. So that is a very good question and I'm sure a lot of you guys wanted to know that. So okay, this question is actually for Erin. I'm having a, tr a problem with weeds and bugs on my lawn, which is St. Augustine grass. Are there any products you could recommend? Uh, I would say you should follow the Lawn Care Nut on YouTube. He, he's pretty large. He's got um, 100, over 100,000 subscribers mm -hmm. and he lives in Florida and he has St. Augustine grass. Um, we don't, so I, I don't think I no. could really give you any uh, tips or pointers there, but I'll bet you he could if, if I got he on his, his channel. I got on his channel tonight. Oh, yeah? Like before we started, just to see what kind of stuff. And he's got lots of stuff on St. Augustine yeah, Grass. Yeah, the Lawn Care Nut. Check him out. Yep. Is Garden Answer a hobby or a real job with an income? Well, it depends on what you call real job. It started out a hobby. June of 2014 was when we uploaded our first video, and it was a hobby like we were doing it all weekends and evenings and stuff for yeah. two years before it became kind of a real job for yeah. us. It's a real job. We yeah. we do create an income off of it. If you watch our videos on uh, YouTube, there are advertisements that play ahead of the video, like a pre-roll ad. Mm -hmm. We make a little bit off of that. So watch the whole ad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Subscribe on YouTube and, and watch yeah. the video twice and watch the ad. Yeah. Um, we also work with companies uh, to do videos and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's a real job. Yeah. I do work a little bit, like I said, at the garden center. Like I help out. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my status. I help out at this point. Yeah. Ever since I got pregnant and then had Benjamin, um, definitely don't have the time to spread myself that thin. Right. So we, you know, something had to give. How do you keep Russell away from your plants? My cat eats all my plants. Oh, that is so hard. So Dexter was like the model cat. He never bugged anything in our house. Never got into my, like the dirt in my plants. Never ate my plants. Never even sniffed my plants. Russell? Russell's oh. kind of a naughty kitty. He is. He's in his teenage years right now. And I'll tell him to not, like, it'll be in the middle of the night and I'm feeding Benjamin oh, and I can see him over you. there messing with my bless plant. You. And I'm telling him, like, Russell, Russell, because I can't be really loud because I don't want to, like, wake him up fully. And so, and Russell just looks at me and keeps on doing it. Oh, it's so frustrating. I know. I mean, like, the only thing that works is a spray bottle that works for him. Um, and he's not doing it quite as much as he You was. also used clear tape on the windowsills I when did. you didn't want him to... Sticky Climb stuff. They don't like sticky stuff at all. Yeah, that worked for a little while. Yeah, that was when we had the Christmas tree up. I put sticky tape, um, like packing tape upside down on all my windowsills because he'd jump up on the windowsills and then jump into the tree. And he never bugged my tree after nope. that. It did peel some of my paint up on the windows. Yeah, it did. Because <laughs> like on the ends, you know, I folded it over so it stuck down and it peeled paint up right there. <sighs> what is a good editing program for videos and what do you use to record the videos? 
So I got started, uh, I bought a Mac, MacBook Pro, like right before we started making videos, and it comes with iMovie. That's what I started with. Um, after about a year and a half, I upgraded to Final Cut Pro, which is like the step up step up from that, I guess. it's They're both made by Apple. That's all I have experience with. Uh, it works for me. I tried to use Adobe Premiere, which is another program that a lot of people use. Um, couldn't figure it out. It just didn't click with me. So um, Final Cut Pro, I think, is the best. That's what I use now, but iMovie is great. So now I'm going to move on to a few Facebook questions. And the first one's kind of funny because it's something I never thought anybody would ever ask me ever. And it was the most liked question of the whole bunch. Um, and Rebecca asks, hair and makeup tips? I know you once told us you use the Chi products on your hair, but do you blow dry, flat iron, etc.? I never fancied myself one for like beauty questions, hair and makeup and stuff like that, because I don't, I don't feel like I do it well. In fact, you guys have probably noticed I only wear my hair one way, but that's because that's the only way I know how to wear it. Oh, it's, okay. <laughs> it's the only way I know how to fix it. Oh no. Oh. Let's do you want some of this? Yes. I have really curly hair, naturally curly hair, and it's kind of a pain. Um, so I actually do blow dry it. Um, usually I, it goes up like wet at night, and then I blow dry a half wet hair in the morning, and then I use a flat iron and sometimes a curling iron on the bottom, and it stays relatively tame. Depends on the humidity. <laughs> you should make a get ready with me. Yeah, we've had video. a lot of you guys ask, and I don't know if it's just a loud minority minority of you guys ask me to do a like a hair tutorial. I just don't feel like that would be very well received on a gardening channel. Um, so it makes me kind of nervous. Maybe one day we'll do it. Um, but I do use Chi Silk Infusion. I do use the shampoo and conditioner if I feel like spending the money on it, but typically I just use cheap shampoo and conditioner, cheap hairspray. But the Chi Silk Infusion is probably, it's like the only thing that I use like consistently. Um, makeup tips, I use all like departments, not department store, like box store, like Walmart makeup. <laughs> I do wear lots of sunscreen though, so I don't know if that makes a difference. Oh, okay, and this was a really good question, I thought, because I've been asked this before, and I always forget to talk about it. Um, I was wondering, what do, you, what do you do with your drip system in winter? How do you get rid of water and pipes? And if you don't, doesn't it damage the pipes when it freezes? So we have um, both in-ground sprinkler system and then above-ground both pop-up sprinkler, or like, riser. Mm -hmm. Sprinklers on risers and then brown drip tubing. And they're all on the same kind of irrigation system. We just have it blown out. Mm -hmm. So, compressor. Yeah, air compressor. Uh, although we, we have a guy that comes and does it for us because mm -hmm. um, he's set up and he can come and just, you know, do it really we quick. We don't have an air compressor, so we, yeah, that wouldn't work. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so all the water's out of it. So the brown drip tubing and stuff, it lays on the ground in the winter, snow hits it, whatever. Um, you, usually, I, I hope that most of it's covered with some kind of a mulch so you're not seeing the tubing, but it still is ex more exposed. Mm -hmm. But there's no water in it, so there's no harm to it. I'm very curious about your video process. From equipment, how you use the equipment to pull off such a casual yet polished look to how you edit. Maybe Aaron needs his own, his own episode. I wish he would do his own episode. I think that it would be really interesting. Like to show all the gear and I could I could film it for you. You could film it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can go over the gear really quick. Mm -hmm. There's not that much actually. Uh, the camera I use for 90% of the filming is a Canon 80D. And the reason I like that is because it has an articulating uh, screen. It also has really good autofocus, um, which is really nice for the videos where I'm following you around the garden. Mm -hmm. It'll just autofocus on your face. Um, I like that feature. I use a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8 lens. <laughs> Did you get all that? Yeah. Um, and I use that for about 90% of what we film. In fact, that's what um, I'm using right now. Oh, if you go to our website. Yeah, if you go to gardenanswer.com, there's a gear uh, tab. And it, I keep it fairly updated as far as all the gear that we use, like tripods. And drone. Drone. What type. Mm -hmm. um, everything. So, and I recommend everything on that list. So. Hi, sweet boy. I love you. Hello from Michigan. I'm considering a greenhouse. What are the benefits of having a cold frame versus a heated greenhouse? Which do you recommend for bitter cold winters? Do cold frames provide enough warmth through plants or seed starting? So a cold frame and a greenhouse are definitely two very different things. We have a cold frame, um, which we're not trying to do in any seed starting. It's definitely not good for seed starting because it only keeps it like 20, 25. 
Well, a cold frame is a non-heated right. greenhouse. Right, so it only keeps it like 20, 25 degrees warmer, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe more on, well, on hot days. It gets blistering in there. We have mm -hmm. to keep fans going. Um, but it's, yeah, definitely not suited for seed starting. Um, heated greenhouse would be lovely. That's that's on my like, list. We just don't know anything about it, to be no. completely honest. Um, we kind of wanted to set up a greenhouse but we didn't know you know where to get one from exactly how to set it up temperatures double um double lining like double yeah, walled you can get double walled heated like um poly greenhouses so something yeah. like ours but it's got two layers of plastic and there's air that blows in between the mm -hmm. layers and it keeps it way more it's insulated. an insulation layer yeah. yeah we just don't really know so if anybody wants to take a trip out to ontario oregon and set one up for us and set up a <laughs> greenhouse and teach us how it works we will do an episode. I would love, like it's on my wish list one day, along with a baby grand piano, <laughs> to have a heated greenhouse that has electricity and plumbing, like a real floor with drains. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, you know, I um, when we go to England, I've been in a, a couple of greenhouses that I absolutely love. I don't know if you guys have seen those. They've got either brick or stone, like, you know, a few feet up the wall, and then it's metal with glass. They're so beautiful, and it's one of my dreams, and my mom's too. We both would love to have one of those types of greenhouses one pretty. day. It would be, and then, you know, it gets so cold here in winter, typically. It's not, this is like an atypical winter for us, but it gets so cold that it would be a nice reprieve in an area where we could grow some things. Like this, I am so thankful we have an extra bedroom where I can put these grow lights and have plants in here where it's warm, but you know, you always want more. <laughs> it's not the know. same. No, it's not the same quite. How are you balancing the baby and having time to shoot videos? Like this. <laughs> yeah. So he does not sleep for very long. He, I think it might have to do with how he grazes. So he doesn't eat a huge amount or a, like a, a full bottle, a hardly ever. He'll just have a little bit and then go to sleep. And we do try to stimulate him and keep him up as long as possible. So he'll eat as much as possible. But he just cat naps. Mm -hmm all the time like all day and all night it's getting better um he is um, eating a little bit more going longer stretches so i think it'll get easier and easier but for the first few weeks it was super hard to do videos in fact one of the grandmas would come over and watch him um and we'd get some video stuff done but now i think he he's staying up longer and or sleeping a little longer so we'll either have him in videos with us or he'll be sleeping probably like right off camera. <laughs> we did that once. I took him out to the greenhouse. It was 70 some degrees in there one day. And so we brought out his little bassinet and we just set, set him up in there. He slept the whole time. It was lovely. It's just a new normal. You know, you just have to be able to roll with it. And I've tried to be good with that. Thankfully, I haven't dealt with any postpartum depression or anything like that. I'm so thankful for that. Um, it's been a fairly smooth transition, smoothish. Yeah. I mean, honestly, um, being married for over 11 years, I kind of expected it to be a little bit harder, and I've always been fairly independent, both of us have, um, so I wasn't really sure how it would be, uh, but it, I don't know. When you have them, it's just like... It's the best. Yeah, like I don't want it to be any different way, so you're the best. You're so cute. Okay, guys, so I think we're going to wrap it up at that. I think we hit some gardening stuff, some equipment stuff, and some Benjamin stuff. Yeah. Um, so we kind of did the full circle. Yeah. Sorry if we did not answer your questions. We just tried to like randomly select a bunch of questions and we'll do this again here probably pretty soon. Maybe, maybe. like once a month or something. Yeah. We always say that. We always say we're going to do things more often. We'll see. Oh, oh he yawned. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us um, and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.